Oh, hello, YouTube. It's Joel. We're back. We are in Espoo. <laughs> pretty, last week, I'm pretty sure I said that we were going to be in Estonia this week. That was incorrect. <laughs> we are in Finland. I don't know how to say it, but I'm going to say Espoo, Espo. I'm not sure, but uh, a lovely event in, in the Nordics, in, the, in Finland this week. Um, I'm going to start with pears. Because, again, there's not a ton to say. But I really did like this competition overall. It was like, who's who is going to win this? Because it could have been a lot of people or like, no, I don't know. This, was, this, this competition was very up in the air. So the favorite was the Italian team, uh, Gallardi and Ambrosini. And I'm, I've been saying it for like two years. I'm obsessed with Ambrosini and his dedication to the mustache. And... So good. He definitely, like, serves me some Freddie Mercury. So thank you for that. Um, and they love doing an Italian program as well. Uh, they were definitely the winners here. They won by a lot of points. And they are not one of the strongest pair teams in the world. But guess what? Now they are. They made the Grand Prix final. <laughs> so that's very exciting for them. Now we have two Italian teams that have made the Grand Prix final, which I didn't don't think anybody would have pr predicted at all, but very, very cool. I'm interested to see where they fall with the other four teams that qualify for the Grand Prix final as well. Um, cause most of them have skated a little, the other teams have skated a little bit more consistently, uh, over the past few seasons than this Italian team. But anyways, I'm, I'm curious, anything can happen in pairs. Ice is slippery. When you're chucking girls around, you just never know. Um, the German team came in second here and the Georgian team came third. I don't really have a ton to say. <laughs> it was fine. It was, it was a fine event. Um, yeah, moving on. We're going to go to, we're going to switch speeds completely. And we're going to go to women's. Um, I really like the women's event here. I, I really like, I really want to start with a little like short program shout out to Mami Hara because she's so cute. And her her Merry Christmas program, the dress is perfect. She just skates with so much joy and it just comes out of her. You could just tell that she's, I think maybe before there was so much pressure to like make that Japanese Olympic team and then she didn't because she was kind of on a comeback and she wasn't really in the top group. And now she's for sure in the top group. She's won two uh, Grand Prix this season and is the leader heading into the Grand Prix final in the women's. So that's amazing. I did not see that coming. Um, but she, yeah, she's just, you could just tell that she's like skating for her. Her coaches seem like very almost at ease with her and she's just smiling and she's just nailing her programs. So I'm going to talk a little bit about more about her in a sec. Um, but I wanted to kind of go through a little bit of the competition. So we had um, our we had several Finnish entries here. Um, we had we had the reigning national champion who unfortunately Jenny Saarinen, who unfortunately did not have a very strong free skate after she had a pretty good short program and then she retired. So that's too bad that she went out. I'm, I hope she really remembers how amazing that short program was and just moves past this free program because it did not show her potential and her abilities. Um, the other, I really liked the blonde, what's her name? Lin Linnea Sider. She, her smile, she's a star. She's got it. I was, although she didn't have like the strongest technical content and she finished in 11th here, I was really drawn to her as a skater and I really think that she has something very special. I think she needs to, I don't know, work with some higher level coaches or something um, because I think she could be very exciting and she has good spring in her legs and I'm, yeah, she just needs a little more control and a little more training and I think every way and I think she could be absolutely amazing because her face sells. Uh, and then the last fin Finnish girl here was um, Jana Yerkinen, who's only like 15, who bombed the short and then had such a good free skate. She, her jumps were like, are she going to land it? Oh, squeak it out. And then she 
crushed her fruit program. So she ended up being um, in 10th. Uh, so obviously, I don't think they were they were really going for a top spot here for any of the Finnish ladies. But really cool to see that they had three contenders here. Um, and they, I mean, they all had, I guess they all had ups and downs. <laughs> um, I also want to talk a little bit about Evelata Kibus from Estonia, who just had like a meltdown, her free program. It's, I think when you're like watching a program like Shallow and you like, I really need to feel some emotional connection. And when there's just so many mistakes, it just takes me out of it. And I feel really bad for her because she skated. She had some really great skates last season. And so far this season, it's not really happening for her. I don't know if she's injured or tired or what's going on, but um, I think she needs a little, a little bit of a, a reinfusion of zest for the sport because I'm, she's looking real frustrated. And I think, I think she has something special as well. And it's just not coming out this year. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, Maddie Skeezis, our my my Canadian love. She did pretty well here. She was fifth uh, in both the short and the free program. She, I really do actually like her free skate to uh, West Side Story. Maria, the costume's really cute. I just feel like she wasn't didn't have her legs fully under her at this event. Some of her jumps were amazing. Some of them were not. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Her coach seemed very happy with her at the end uh, because I think this was a better skate than... This was a better skate for her than at Skate Canada where she had a really good short and was first after the free program and then she had a pretty brutal free skate. So good for her for coming back and um, having a significantly better skate, but again, not, her, not to her full potential. And I really like watching her because she skates to the left where most people skate to the right. And... I think it just adds another dimension because there's just not that many people who skate that way. So when you see her winding up for a jump around the corner in the opposite direction than everybody else, it's, I don't know, it catches your eye in a different way. And I, I really like that about her skating. And she's so strong. Like, I, I really feel like she's selling it. And, and I think she gets what her job is out there, uh, which, she, which she's shown to us on several occasions now in the past year. So congrats to her for uh, a better outing here at... Uh, in Finland. Um, let's jump to the Japanese ladies. So Rika Kihira is back. She's still not doing her full content. No Lutz yet because she's still quite injured, but she came out here and like skated so well. Clean program. Her flip looks really good. She, I think she only just put it back in her program a few weeks ago. So her flip looks really good. Uh, she did some triple toes, some triple sow combos. You know, she's doing what she can. But when you see someone go out there, again, who just loves skating and skates clean, they have all green boxes at the top. And when they finish, you're just like, oh, that was lovely. And that was Rika Kihira in this competition. We actually had quite a few very clean skates at this competition. And which is kind of not the trend. <laughs> so congrats to her. Uh, Mana Kawabe ended up in bronze. She's still not doing a triple axel, but she came out and she skated really clean as well. She just, I think she just eked Rika Kihira out because um, Rika had a mistake in the short. And so she just, yeah. And Mana Kawabe had a very good, very strong free program. She's actually second in the free program. So I really do like her pink, uh, pink dress. It's very like pale and very subtle. And normally that's not my favorite type of costume. I like a little bit more like vibrancy, something a little more loud, something a little more even tacky. Uh, but this dress is so beautiful and looks so good on her and just floats through the program with her. And so I think she did very well. I agree with the bronze medal for her here. Um, Luna got eked out for the gold. She got silver. Queen of the Silver. This this is that. I hope that's not what she's going to be known for now. She's she's been she's been a silver queen. We want. I want to see her getting gold. I actually really like what they've done with her free program. It's very cool. It's like it's like this evolution throughout the season because now it's the third time we've seen that program and it's the third iteration of costume, third iteration of music. So they're just continuously refining this program, which I think maybe would be 
difficult for the skater to keep on top of the, the changes, but she seems to be doing just fine. Um, she's, she had a couple little errors, but nothing too major, and she was ahead um, in the short, so she ended up still getting silver. Um, yeah, she just had, yeah, she just had a couple little jump errors, but gorgeous program. I just also, like, love her short program. It's, that is the costume that I want to see. Neon, cha-cha, some skin, or skin. Um, yeah, I really, really like. Honestly, her short program dress would fit very well in the rhythm dance this season for the, the Latin vibes. Um, and then our skate, our winner here was Mai Mihara. Again, I'm back to talking about her. I can't say enough about her. Her free program was so good. She, uh, had such a strong skate. Her, the, I think she was probably the highlight of the women's field. Uh, her short anyways was probably the highlight. I would say maybe, who was the highlight in the free program? Maybe Rika, actually. Rika and Luna, I think, were my highlights. I don't love Mai Mihara's short program, or sorry, free program as much as the short, but she just skates so well with such conviction and such joy. And I think it's almost, she's missing a little bit of sass from the free program that I feel like she could bring in as a as another emotion. But I just I just love watching her skate. She's so smooth. Her The exits from her jumps are so good. Uh, yeah, just I feel very confident watching her. So good for her. I think the women's competition was strong. Very, very strong. Um, final thoughts? No, that's all. We're going to move on to the men. So I think one of the moments of this event was the Finnish guy. Uh, what was his name? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Walter Vir, Virtanen. <laughs> Sorry. So bad. Um He's like an, uh, a slightly more mature skater in his mid-30s. He's the same age as me, which is amazing. He came out in front of his home crowd, had probably one of... I've seen him skate before, and been, he's been a total mess. Here, he like clung on to, to a few little jump errors. He stayed on his feet. He His daughter was in the audience. I don't know. There was something about just the the victoriousness of him like coming out and throwing it down in his home nation. And it was this, the announcer said it was a 17th senior, senior level competition season. Wild. Uh, and they also didn't say he was retiring. So that's cool. I hope he continues because I think this is a peak for him. He doesn't have the higher, highest technical content in comparison to the rest of the men, but he definitely didn't come last because there were some people, he skated well with a lower technical content, and there were some guys who skated with a higher technical content that were a complete splat fest. So, <laughs> namely, Maurice Kvilashkvili, and I don't know what happened there with him. He's, he's, he's I think he's missing a Terry. <laughs> um, Camden. I want to talk about Camden. He came in fifth and he was seventh in the short. So he moved up a little bit. And I really just like loved when he's on, he's so on and his jumps are so solid and he looked great in this black costume. He really sold it. The choreo is really good. Um, I think spins are still his weakness, but I, I was just, I was just kind of obsessed and mesmerized by his free program because he really just sold it. And he got, he got a 157. It's Pretty good score in this competition. Very good score. Uh, so congrats to him. He's he's actually kind of becoming the fifth queen. <laughs> he's been fifth a lot. And uh, I would love to see him come out and just nail both programs, which I think is always going to be um, a struggle. But I think I feel a build for Camden, and I hope he does too. So I'm curious to see him at U.S. Nationals because uh, that's going to be a fight for bronze. <laughs> Probably for him. <laughs> um, I really... Oh, I wanted to talk about uh, the Estonian skater, Arlet Lavandi. He has such potential. He did not have the best skates here. Um, yeah, not the best skates here, but I just... I don't know, something about watching him. He creates such interesting positions. He's got some flexibility. He's trying some new things. And I I don't know, there's something about his program. I didn't really like his costumes. I wasn't really that drawn to his music, but I really liked him on the ice 
and I really feel like he sold it as well and just gave me a show. So I, yeah, I, I really, really feel good about him. Hmm, who's next? Okay, so Kevin, oh, we're gonna talk about Kevin Amos later. Um, Keegan. I love Keegan. I love Keegan when he's on, but here he was fourth in the short program and 12th in the free program last. So his short program really saved me, ended up in eighth year, which was, I think, lucky, potentially quite generous. His free program was a nightmare. It was actually terrifying to watch. And when he went for that second quad toe, which I think he landed or sort of landed, um, that was like, what are you doing? Because he splatted so hard on the first one. He, when he falls, he just falls full body almost every time. Just, and maybe that's his technique for not getting injured because he's sliding into the fall, but it looks horrible. <laughs> As a spectator, it's like, as a spectator, it's hard to recover visually from someone hitting the ice like that, where you, where it looks like they got injured, and then watching them do seven or six more jumping passes. It's, ugh. and he's, he has such cool skills. He's such a good skater. He has, he's such a showman. <sighs> this wasn't it. Um, yeah, just free. The jumps were scary, man. Like, so... So scary. Um, so our third place, Kevin Amos, my cute little gladiator. <laughs> I, I always have a little soft spot for the French skaters. Kevin Amos is a doll. I think he's so cute. He's, he, you could just tell he like loves skating so much, has the passion, wants to do well, and has been very up and down with injuries over the past year. And, but he didn't bring the quads to this event, but... He, the jumps he did do were amazing. Very, very good. And he had an amazing free skate. I love his little brown tank top and gauntlets. Um, kind of a plain costume for him, but even with gauntlets and a tank top and some embellishment. But, but I would say overall kind of plain costume, but very effective. I don't need more because he is extra. <laughs> He's given me all the aerials, all the acrobatics, Basically, like, every flippy move you can think of that's not illegal, <laughs> he, he's doing. Um, also, like, it, so is just everybody doing a cartwheel, at, mostly at the end of the program, just right before the finishing pose? Is that, that's the new trend alert? I think it's cool, and I don't know if it gives them a bonus, or I don't know why, but so many cartwheels. I love a cartwheel, but they're not being integrated uh, seamlessly into a lot of the programs when they are just done as like a, I guess like an exclamation point just before the final, final pose. I don't know. So for some of them it works, for some of them I don't think it's very successful. Um, so I would implore everybody to get more creative with the cartwheel. Also, I would love to see like a side-by-side -side pair or dance team cartwheel. Throwing it out there. Maybe it would be difficult to choreograph on the music. Um, and would maybe be a risky thing, but I think it could be really effective if done well in like a side-by-side -side step sequence or, hmm, I don't know, just throwing that out there. We've yet to see, I, don't, I do not believe we have seen, correct me if I'm wrong, comment below, if we have seen a side-by-side -side cartwheel, because I, I would love to see the replay. So our second place was our Japanese, our top Japanese skater here, which was Shun Sato. He's definitely more of, a technical, he has more technical prowess than the artistic side, but I think his um, choreo is getting better with every every time I see him, and I think he's quite young. So he he, I found his choreography to just be like a lot of reaching, just reaching here, reaching up, reaching back, reaching through, just reaching, and maybe we could vary some different arm movements would be great. Um, he's not the most expressive, but this, he had a very, very good program. Um, nailed the quad lats, quad toe, triple toe, second quad in the second quad toe in the second half, both his triple axles. Like he, his jumps were amazing. He threw it down. He got a, he got a 180 huge score. And I, now he's definitely qualified for the Grand Prix final, which I think is completely merited. Um, but yeah, he was amazing. 
I was, again, I'm generally more drawn to the more complete skater who has that technical side and the artistic expression that make me, that really that pulls me in, which he doesn't really do fully yet maybe for me, but the clean skate is compelling to me just in general. It's just, it just, when they're doing that well, it makes me happy as a viewer because I'm not scared that they're going to hurt themselves. <laughs> Keegan. <laughs> um, obviously, our winner here was Ilya Mal Malinin. Um, I like. I really like the music for his free program. The costume is awful. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, I think he has a lot of really cool choreographic moments that are, again, he's kind of doing a lot of tricks and turns and flippy things, kind of like Kevin Amos is, with maybe just a little bit less style. But um, you cannot deny his technical prowess is just at a completely like next level of upper another echelon i would say like shun sato definitely like is almost is almost at that level like hitting that quad quad lats but Ilya melanin quad axel third time in competition this season third time he stayed on his feet this was the, probably the worst of his three quad axles that he's done this season so far but Incredible, like blows my mind every time. Um, quad toe looked like a double toe to him, like so easy. Quad sao cow also looked like a double jump to him. Like he gets so much height, floats, lands, glides out, no problem. Like he's been, it's like he's been doing quads since he was walking. It's wild. Um, quad toe oiler triple sao, second half. Like, but, uh, um, then he throws a triple flip, triple axle at the end. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I've seen this program before and I've seen his, like his, the structure of his program. And every time I like forget and then I'm completely wowed. So huge skate for him. He got a 192. I think, honestly, it could have been higher. <laughs> um, he seems pretty happy and he won this, he won this competition by, 12 points so yeah i'm i'm curious if he'll ever throw the quad axle in the short program or if he's allowed i don't know if that would be very risky but it would be amazing uh and it would be amazing if he did one of the short and two in the free like nobody could touch him if he landed that 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 layout i mean already no one can touch him so let's see what he does next i really hope he continues doing these like jump into a triple axle as the second part of the combo because not very many um, competitors, I think like maybe Yuzuru and Shoma, other than that, I don't remember really anyone doing that, not recently. Again, maybe I'm wrong. I don't I haven't memorized every single fact about skating, but f from my recollection, I have only I only remember those two skaters doing it in the past. So good for him. He's just pushing the boundaries of the technical side of the, of the sport while like still selling it. So, and he's so young. So I just hope he doesn't get injured. And I can't imagine him not winning US Nationals this year. It would be, he would have to have a complete implosion to, to not place or to not get the gold. Um, let's move on to dance. I got some opinions. <laughs> so we had some, some different programs, some programs that I hadn't seen yet this year, which I really liked. Um, I love the French couple that came out first. They were last, but I don't care. I love their like pink, um, uh, like what about us kind of moment. Um, they were great. I love, I'm obsessed with the Finnish team, um, Yuka and Yuho. They, I've talked about their program before. It, I said in the past that I thought it was kind of, she was like a fairy or a nymph or something. And, and he was like on this journey. Well, this time this, the announcer gave us the backstory. She, and she definitely did her makeup a little bit different, I think. So she was, is a mermaid and he's a sailor and she's seducing him. And then I guess killing him, like bring, like sucking him down into the ocean to drown him or something. Uh, I love this program. I think it's so cool. It's so whimsical. It's interesting. Even if you didn't understand the story, you can tell you're on this like quest with them. And I don't know, everything 
everything is right about this program for me, except for the guy, Yuho's costume could be a little bit better. It's a bit drab because her costume is so pretty. Um, <laughs> there's a, a lot of purple ombre going on in the ice dance field at this event, uh, but they were amazing. Um, the Czech team, Tashlerova and Tashler. I also am obsessed with them. They had a few mistakes at their last Grand Prix, even though they did skate pretty well. And I felt like, I think I said that the last Grand Prix that they, that he really felt like, I really felt like he was supporting her in a lot of the elements. Like she was just a little behind or, or was a little off balanced, maybe just nerves. But in this performance, they were both like hitting it. They're so fast. They had, I love their curve lift. Um, they were making like really interesting shapes, confident movements. They just like, hit it hard for me. And apparently they toned down the politicalness of the program. I don't really know what that means. Um, they don't need to tone anything down. Amp it up, if anything. <laughs> but I love, I do love, I love their costumes. I think they look great. Um, I, yeah, I'm, every time they're, they, their name is announced and I see them coming on the ice, I am so pumped because I know I'm going to get a good show. Um, the other Finnish team ended up getting third, and I'm not going to lie, like, their program wasn't my favorite, but they are so beautiful to watch. Another ombre purple dress. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I wasn't drawn to them, but I could tell that they were just a great skaters. They've been skating together for a long time. Her, the female partner is so beautiful and really served face. So uh, congrats to them for making it on the podium at a home uh, a home Grand Prix. That's amazing. I don't think, I don't know if we anticipated a Finnish contender getting on the podium at this event. Let's just check everyone else. Nope. So cool. Really good for them. Um, so yeah, they were third. Another uh, uh, purple dress. We go to Jean Luc Baker and Caitlin Hawaiik, who I think other than the mermaid program, which I think is my absolute favorite. Their program is incredible. And I am not a huge lyrical for a for a free dance. I'm not into the lyrical so much, especially when it's like lyrical program after lyrical program after lyrical program. It just gets a little tired for me, even if they're beautiful skaters. But this free, pro, free dance, Hawaii Can Baker, stunning. Everything about it, stunning. They're incredible. Um, they, you could just tell they like love each other. They love skating together. They respect each other so much. They had a really amazing, like gorgeous performance. And I really don't think that they were like, they should have been 10 points back from Piper and Paul, but they were, I guess they were seven points back in the short. And then they, yeah, they were quite a, quite a bit back. So I don't know. I, again, I never understand this, the scoring. I was, I was actually thinking like, I don't always get this. I don't always get how this sport is scored. And that affects me as a fan a little bit because I'm always feeling a bit dissatisfied when I'm, when I see a program that I think is amazing and I don't understand why it gets a lower score. And I think it, obviously it has to do with like the edges and the speed and da da da. But a lot of these things that, I'm not really paying attention to so much or don't maybe translate when you're watching it on uh, YouTube. <laughs> so I, I definitely notice when I watch ice dance in person, you can, you can tell which skaters are going fast, which, which skaters skate bigger than others. When you have a camera following them around, you can't really, some of them you can't really tell, but um, they just skate, Caitlin and John Luke just skate so big. And I, yeah. That's it is the second time I've seen that program. I loved it the first time and I loved it this time too. So I'm excited. I'm ex actually excited to watch US Nationals to see that program again. Uh, and then our winning team here, Piper and Paul, Canadian legends. Uh, they did their Avita program, which people are raving about, and it's not my favorite. <laughs> I much preferred Caitlin and John Luke's program. Uh, they obviously, Piper and Paul are amazing. They skated so well. I call it their Avita Christmas program. Um, I don't really understand. I was very distracted by her purple fingernails. And I think if, I, I don't know, maybe I was looking for a reason to be distracted. 
I don't know. But I, yeah, I wasn't, just wasn't drawn to this program. Uh, yeah, obviously they're great. I think Piper really sells the program. She gives a lot of face, but I'm just, I just don't feel warmth and I'm not buying it. And I want to. So, and they got a huge score here. They won by a lot. And I think they probably are the best skaters in the field. I get, I, if, I, I, they must be edge wise, speed wise, all these things that I'm not really taking into consideration. Um, but uh, their, their, their lifts are great. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, they're just not my favorite. Um, it's not my favorite program. I have loved programs of theirs in the past. This is not my favorite program from them. I think that if she's gonna sell this big, like happy, blah, like musical theater face, they should do something more f upbeat and fun. Because Avita is, I don't know. Or maybe I just don't like Avita. <laughs> maybe it has nothing to do with Piper and Paul. Maybe it's me. Maybe I just don't like Avita. But anyways, they won. I think they deserve to win. Not my favorite program. It's a subjective sport. So uh, yeah, my final thoughts. Maybe we need to like move away from purple ombre costumes. Just like pick an interesting other color. Just throwing it out there. Um, I do definitely prefer a faster paced program that has a story. Whether that story is clear or not, I don't really care. I just want to be taken on a journey and I want to feel like there's some sort of like dynamic change throughout the program representing like different parts of the journey um i'm really loving all these unique like curve lift positions rotational lift positions they terrify me they, they all look so strong and like i it always it's stunning to me how they don't get more injured when they're doing these elements so fast with knives on their feet so congratulations um yeah. Ice dance. What a, what a strange and beautiful sport. I do really wish that I understood more about the scoring and I have read up on it and have tried, <laughs> but visual, what the visual and the math sometimes I don't understand, but also I'm not a nice dancer. So I don't know. Uh, all in all, I think this is an amazing final event here in Espoo, Finland. And I have had a really good time doing this series. I am very excited for the Grand Prix final in a couple weeks, and I'm excited not to do this next week. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really excited. Clearly, there's going to be some Japanese dominance at the Grand Prix final, potentially in every field, which I think is amazing. Uh, I... I'm here for it. I think they all they all have great skating skills. They're all doing the big elements and yeah, big fan of the Japanese. I guess no Japanese dance team here. I guess there's only really two that are competing and they I think they've already both done their Grand Prix. So maybe they just weren't at this one. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for Grand Prix final. I'm ex I, I think I'm very curious to see the podium, especially I think in the men's field because there's four Japanese guys going and like other than I think Shoma's if he skates well he's going to take it but if he doesn't the Mel's could go anyway so but I do anticipate a Japanese sweep at in the men's field at the Grand Prix final okay I'm gonna go so follow me on Instagram TikTok at North Joel and have a lovely evening comment below bye-bye